Hello dear learners, welcome now to lecture 4. The title of lecture 4 is the content of presentations. What should presentations consist of? How they should be organized? First point which I have highlighted here is during a presentation it is also important to prepare the presentation material with care. Yesterday we introduced this topic in the previous lecture. We go slightly deeper into the topic. So what are the other important points here? First is researching the subject. The topic on which you are speaking, you need to do some research on this. It is important here to be clear about the objectives of the presentation, about the audience you are presenting to. Then comes selecting the content. Once the information has been gathered, it is necessary to filter out the essential points. One has to group the ideas under separate headings, classify the information depending on the available time, keep the matter strictly to the point. Not a word extra, not a word less, but to the point. Then comes planning for the talk. To get the message effectively across, one has to carefully draw out a presentation layout or what we call as a presentation plan. A well planned presentation is always a well received one. The beginning of a presentation, the next subtopic. During a presentation, one is always sure of the first few minutes of the audience's attention, what we normally call as attention span. So what we have to cash on this very fertile time when the attention of your audience is at a high point. One therefore has to be careful about the beginning, make an impression that will hold the attention of the people. One can always start with a good quotation, all that glitters is not gold, something like that. A rose by any name, smells as sweet, sweet are the uses of adversity. We have heard enough of engineering, we should now engineer our inner lives. These are some of the popular quotations that that will enable you to catch the attention of the audience. It should be a question, which is the recent thing that you lost and that has upset you? You can begin like a question. What was the most hilarious moment, what was the most hilarious moment you experienced off late in the last one week? So immediately you are sure of the attention. You can also start with a dialogue or even an anecdote. By anecdote, I mean an incident that where you were a participant that you experienced. Or you can tell a popular parable or a fable or a story. Some people prefer to start their presentation with a joke, an unusual definition or a startling statement or statistics also can be very effective. Some people begin with statistics and catch the attention. They give startling statistics. They crack a wonderful joke which actually encapsulates what is happening in the present times. These are the different ways. You can always say last week when I was traveling by train, people were talking about weather and there was this person who didn't know what to say about the weather. So some incident, some episode you can begin with. Then coming to the middle of the presentation, after making an impressive beginning, one has to be able to deliver the contents effectively. Content should be well structured, logically connected and effectively lead towards a specific goal. To sustain the interest of the audience, it is important here to ex include examples and personal experiences, which will make the material more authentic and interesting. Like in the beginning, to reinforce the value of your middle part of your presentation, you can here also you can bring in some 
vital experiences which you went through. And then structurally you come to the end. The way a presentation ends is again very important. Primarily this is what the audience will remember the presentation as. How you end your presentation is normally carried back by the audience to their respective places. It is important therefore to give a presentation the right emphatic conclusion that will make a lasting impact on the listeners. For instance, you can always say nothing is permanent in this world except change. So something to think about. Do not ever major on minor things, do not small insignificant things you do not have to worry much. Coming to the point which I just mentioned a few minutes before that is attention curve. This is a very important term which uh, is being used these days by experts in communication, by psychologists. What exactly do we mean by attention curve? The attention of the audience during a presentation generally goes through, an, through a kind of a graph. I will write here graph because I seem to be, there is a repetition here. It starts on a high, the attention drops a little first and drops more steeply later. It rises again towards the end and further up for the last few minutes. When they get through your signpost, when the audience knows that you are concluding, their attention increases. In between, they have a tendency to become lax. Some of the ways the audience can be kept interested have been listed here. So, if you know the psychology behind audience, the attention graph, you will also bring in interesting things when you suspect that their attention is dropping. One, look into the points where the attention curve drops and consider ways of varying the texture. By texture, we mean the quality of a matter. If your presentation has been largely speech, bring in an audio visual slide or have an interactive session that will ensure participation. You can involve the audience in a question answer session. You can elicit comments on a particular statement that you have made. Keep the sections short and ensure that every section ends on a high. Get the audience involved, decide what you want them to remember and stress on it. And at the end of this particular lecture, I would recommend that you go to these website, the links that I have given to sort of learn more about the content of your presentations. Thank you.